Welcome to the Matawan Aberdeen School District's regular action meeting on April 25th, 2022. The time is now 6.30 p.m. The New Jersey Open Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or agreed upon. In accordance with the provision of this act, the Matawan Aberdeen Regional School District Board of Education advertised this meeting on January 10th, 2022 in the Asbury Park Press and the Star Ledger. This notice was sent to the municipal clerks of the borough of Matawan and the township of Aberdeen, and the Matawan Aberdeen Public Library. The notice was also placed on the district's website. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Case, can we please have roll call? Mr. Ahern? Here. Dr. Delaney? Here. Ms. Silas? Here. Ms. Friedman? Here. Ms. Martinez? Here. Mr. Montone? Here. Ms. Powell? Here. Here. <laughs> Ms. Osborne? Present. Mrs. Scully? Here. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the Committee of the Whole meeting, March 14, 2022, Executive Session one meeting minutes March 14, 2022. The second executive session meeting minutes March 14, 2022. Regular action meeting minutes March 28, 2022. The first executive session meeting minutes March 28, 2022. The second executive session meeting minutes March 28, 2022. A motion and a second? All motion. Second. second. Um, and we're going to switch up the agenda a little bit tonight. Um, before the executive session, we're actually going to um, turn it over to Mr. Perlman for the student representative's report. And then from there, we'll jump into the superintendent's report. Good evening, Board of Education. I'm pleased to be back with you all tonight after being absent from my last speech. Without further ado, I'll give my updates on the district schools. Starting at the high school, Mr. Eiler and students are getting prepared for all the end of year events, with testing occurring tomorrow and Wednesday, as well as May 3rd, 4th, and 5th for all freshmen, while the juniors have their testing on May 23rd through the 26th. Other events coming up are Relay to Life on May 20th, Battle of the Classes, Prom on June 10th, the Senior Semi-Formal on June 23rd, and of course Graduation, which will probably be held on the high school turf on June 24th at 2 p.m. We now move to MAMS, where children's author Adam, Adam Gidwitz Visited today to speak with all students, and later this week, two Holocaust survivors will visit the middle school to discuss their childhood experience with seventh grade students. Mr. Wells is happy to announce that MAMS will be having a clothing drive, and donations can be dropped off between 3 and 6 p.m. this Thursday. The PTSO will be hosting a Spring Fling Friday, May 13th, from 6 to 8.30 p.m. in the MAMS gym. The cost is $15, and the deadline to sign up is May 6th. MAMS will also be having a graduation ceremony at the high school on June 24th at 10 a.m. Over the summer at MAMS, there will be summer theater from July 6th to, 20, to the 31st, from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Here at Lloyd Road, their annual art, sh art show is back and scheduled for this Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. here in the cafeteria. Parents can also view and purchase their child's artwork from the Lloyd Road website. Students, students will be finishing up NJSLA state practice test this week in preparation for the language arts test, which will, be May, which will begin May 3rd, followed by math and science. The practice tests are intended to help students prepare for the actual test to ease any worries they may have. At Strathmore, kindergarten students are getting excited for their first trip to Holmdale Park tomorrow. First graders are going to the historic village at Allaire. Second graders will be going on a field trip in June, and third graders will be visiting Sandy Hook on May 18th. Third graders are also having their chorus concert on May, 20, on May 16th, and Ms. Barrow is happy to say that Strathmore's annual fun day is scheduled for the end of May. Next up is Ravine Driver. Students are, develop, are developing their coding skills and robotics club and doing computer literacy units. Students also submitted posters for Madeline Burroughs Harbor Week and Earth Day poster contest. Posters are being displayed at Borough Hall. To honor Earth Day, the Environmental Club has begun a school-wide beautification project, which involves researching plants and their growing environments. Students will also be using this recycled materials to make, to make uh, bird feeders. feeders. As for Clifford, all students recently finished, finished reading Stella Diaz Has Something to Say, this year's One School, One Book selection. The author, Angela Dominguez, will be meeting students on Wednesday to discuss her writing process. Lately, students at Clifford have begun earning pause tickets when they are respectful, respectful responsible, safe, and kind. 
The school reached a total of 4,000 tickets, and to celebrate, all students got a new shirt with the mask on the front and the core values in the back. If you have found this month's report thorough and sufficient, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to move into uh, Ms. Case, who's going to present the 2022-2023 budget. Good evening. We'll start to discuss the annual school budget for the next year, the 22-23 budget. There is a presentation for everyone who'd like to follow along, and it will be available on the website tomorrow, as well as a user-friendly budget for your perusal. So as we go through, we just talked about uh, a big shout out to everyone, especially the admin team in the whole district for helping us go through the budget development process and uh, make it a smooth transition. We started in October, everything was due to the business office in December, and then we started kind of working the budget January, February, and March. We have a little bit of a delay this year due to the governor's address, um, so that gave us a little bit of extra time, and but we're back on track for tonight so that we have the public hearing and adoption of the final budget. We have the efficiency standards where the state average for our size district is 16,500. We're coming in at about 15,9. And as we move forward, our district project for the following year, we'll do Cambridge preschool renovations with the use of the capital reserve funds. Strathmore Preschool Playground with the use of PEA funding, HVAC renovations for Cambridge and the high school with the AOP grant funding, paint and flooring throughout the whole entire district using maintenance reserve, and Clipwood and Lloyd Road concrete repairs also utilizing maintenance reserve. Uh, we have additional revenues besides local taxes. You'll see an increase for the preschool grant. Um, it's a combination of the state Revenue that went up about 1.9 due to the fact that we are increasing enrollment about 100 students from this year to last year. And then we also had some carryover from last year moving into this year. Uh, ARP funding that we'll continue to utilize, like we said, some for those HVAC, some for tiered clinicians, facilities usage, transportation, fund balance, and then the use of reserves. And we also have federal semi money that we have to use accordingly to the state. We did lose a little bit of state aid money. That's due to the S-2 bill. Our advocacy budget is higher, so we lost some equalization aid about the amount of uh, 500000 As we move further, we just gave a little bit of an overview of where the state aid history was. We went from about $16 million last year to about 17.9. Again, that the biggest increase is due to the preschool expansion grant. We currently do not have bank cap, which you can use for increased enrollment, sent to or received, deferred pension or liability or health care increases. Uh, as we move forward, though, and the students keep coming with the PEA, we will most likely see an increase for enrollment. As we go through, our local tax levy for both of the districts is about $59 million for general. Debt service was reduced about 216 from the prior year since we went out and did a reassessment of the funds. That was 2.3, so our local tax levy for both towns will be about 61 million. As we see what the tax impact is for Madawan, you will see from last year to this year, it's going to decrease about $59 a household for the year. If you also notice that the total assessment for the towns are below with a link if you'd like to look at the abstract readables for Madawan. As we move on for Aberdeen, we'll see that there's a $15 overall increase for the year from this year to next year, with also the total assessment for the town. Any questions? Um, I don't have a microphone, but I have a question. Okay. Um, let's, I feel like I'm right. <laughs> uh, the S2 bill takes into account the evaluation that's determined by the annual uh, development plan, the assessment development plan, otherwise known as the ADP, is that right? So it's two values. It's the ADP, so the wealth indicator, and the income indicator for the towns. Thank you. Sure. Could you, could you just explain why Madawans went down and those is an increase in average? <clears throat> sure. So it's based off of our A4F schedule, and what happens is there's a average adequacy for each town, and so Aberdeen's is a little bit more at 68%, where Madawans is 32. Any other questions from board members? No? Okay. 
Thank you, Ms. Case. I know I know a lot of careful consideration of planning went into next year's budget, so we really appreciate that. Um, we're now going to move into, um, we're only going to have one executive session tonight, um, and we're going to move into that now. Be it resolved that a closed session be convened for the purposes of discussing privacy, personnel, and attorney-client matters. The subject matter of these discussions will be disclosed to the public when the reason for confidentiality subsides. Although the board cannot guarantee it, the length of the executive session is estimated to be 15 minutes, after which the public meeting of the board shall reconvene and proceed with business. Action will take place. Can I, can I get a motion and a second to enter exec session? All motion. All second. All in favor? Aye. Can I get a motion and a second to return to public session? All motion. All second. Um, well, I just wanted to welcome everybody back from spring break. I hope you all had an enjoyable and restful um, vacation. Um, I wanted to start off by saying I'm very happy to say that after negotiating for the um, past year, you will see on tonight's agenda a resolution to approve the collective bargaining agreement between the Matawan Aberdeen Regional School District Board of Education and the Matawan Aberdeen Regional Education Association. All parties have worked diligently to reach an equitable agreement, one that thanks the staff for their hard work and the rising to the challenge of the last couple of years. Both sides really work together in the interest of the children, and we look forward to seeing what the next few years hold for our district and how we can continue to move the district forward. Also on tonight's agenda is the updated school calendar for the year. As mentioned in the community letter that was sent out before break, Due to two unused snow days, Memorial Weekend will be extended to include Tuesday, May 31st, 2022, and Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, with the exception of Ravine Drive and Stratform, who will have an in-person half day of school on Wednesday, June 1st, to make up for the extra day closures at the schools. The school principals will send out reminders as the day gets closer. Um, also, a reminder that um, parents and guardians wishing to apply for 2022-2023 non-mandated courtesy busing, the sub subscription busing, must complete the application that was sent out, and the app applications are due by May 31st. Another reminder, the um, summer application for K-5 through does close tonight at midnight, so if you are interested, please submit that. We wanted to give a congratulations to the high school and Mr. Bernfein and his video production class for winning $10,000 in the Just Drive PSA video. Um, and lastly, our district, I know um, Mr. Perlman had mentioned this, but our district is holding a clothing drive this Thursday, April 28th, from 3 to 6 p.m. at MAMS. Please consider donating teen and children's clothing as this will directly benefit families in need within the district. Now we will move to curriculum and instruction. Dr. Bombardier. Thank you, good evening. Beginning with Part A, travel, we have one staff member attending the Whole Child Conference and one staff member attending the Special Education Summit. Moving on to Part B, we have one item on the agenda for approval, and that is all for quick instruction. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? All motion. All second. All second. Any questions or comments from the board? No. Okay. Uh, student services, Ms. Perez. Good evening, everyone. I do not have any additional items for student services. Okay. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? A motion. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? No. Okay. Uh, personnel, Mr. Lieben. Thank you. Good evening. We're going to begin tonight with a walking item for action. We have the walking item in front of you. Two items are included. Uh, item number one on the walk-in is a staff rate change. Uh, this is for overloads. And item number two on the walk-in is the safety award, uh, back with the names that are listed. The safety awards are on the bottom of page one, and it does continue on page two of two of the walk-in. To the regular agenda, uh, for action this evening, items that are in red are for sections A, B, C1, C2, C4 through C8, and items D, three through seven, those are all listed in red. That includes personnel. Thank you, can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? All motion. All second. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? 
Okay, um, policy, Mr. Liebman. Thank you, Recommend to the Board, for second reading and adoption to policies, policy 2415.04 and 2415.30. That's for second read and adoption. That concludes policy. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? I'll motion. I'll second. Any questions or comments from the Board? Okay, finance, Ms. Case. Finance will be taking action on the following items, including the finance walk-in item for number 11. So it'll be one payroll, two transfer funds, uh, three, four, and five. Five is approval of the collective bargaining agreement. Six is the adoption of the public hearing for the budget for the 2022-23 school year, as well as the tax levy. Seven is authorization to implement the new budget. Eight is the tax payment schedule for the towns. Nine is the New Jersey SIG grant, which is gives us the ability of 23,000 to go ahead and put it towards additional internal and external cameras, as well as cameras for the buses that we're able to utilize for our safety grant. Fire evacuation drills for the month of March, as well as the settlement agreement between Freeman and Miami State. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? Motion. I'll second. Any questions or comments from the board? Um, yes, Ms. Um, for number five, I just want to let everybody know that um, health care um, is, <coughs> excuse me, a salary guide for the contract. With that, we will move to um, public comments on agenda items and additional matters. The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on matters of interest to the school community. Individuals wishing to speak must state their name and address. Comments are limited to three minutes duration, but an individual may speak a second time after all individuals who wish to speak on the topic have been heard. All statements should be directed to the Board President, and no participant may address or question Board members individually. All speakers are requested to express themselves in a civil manner with due respect for the dignity and privacy of others whose legal rights may be affected. Please note, while it is not the Board's intention to stifle comment on matters of legitimate concern, the public should be aware that if their statements violate the rights of others under the law of defamation or invasion of privacy, they may face personal liability to the injured party. If speakers are uncertain of the legal ramifications of their comments, the Board urges them to seek guidance beforehand from their own legal advisor. Any comments from the public? Sure. I didn't bring it up um, in the beginning. I looked over it. Can you just explain why we are adding the two days to Memorial Day and not taking the two days off in the school year? Which is also always a question. It's a bit complicated, and most of it is connected to graduation dates. So, um, in order to, in, in in previous years when we were at Brookdale, it became even more important. So, um, because you lock in two to three years in advance. So, um, as we moved because of COVID back to the football field, um, as we continue down that path, we can have that open to discussion as well um, with the bargaining units and. It's certainly something that we can we have we have more latitude now than we did in the past. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now we're going to vote on agenda items. Um, all the action items within curriculum and instruction, student services, personnel, policy, second read, and finance. On tonight's agenda, um, there is an agenda item to approve a new contract for Dr. Micah. Um, that contract um, has been, as the law requires, reviewed and approved by the Executive County Superintendent. But before the board can vote on it, it must open the floor to anybody who wishes to comment on it. 
because we're required to have a public hearing and allow the public that opportunity. So now would be the time when uh, the floor will be open to any comments from the public regarding that contract. Madam Chairman, I see no one rising, so um, I think we can declare the public hearing closed. Can I make a comment? Sure. Uh, I just want to thank Dr. Micah for coming here uh, eight years ago to do all the work that he has done. Prior to that, we had been like revolving door superintendents who were here for one purpose, and that was only for their own gain. And Dr. Micah changed that entire outlook, not just for the administration, but the staff, the community, uh, and we are truly becoming a Husky Nation thanks to your leadership. So thank you.